Good evening. My name is Pastor Jeremy Shines, and this is I Am Loved Church. This is God Speaks. Let's pray. Lord, bless this word. Heal us, guide us, and teach us, Lord. Forgive us of our sins and our trespasses. Help us become more like you in your sovereign, most holy name. Amen. All right. God Speaks is my note. All right. So I pray he speaks to you. He will speak through me to you, whether you acknowledge it or not. God can wake us up at night to tell us something important. I've had times in the middle of the night, like literally I am dead asleep, and then boom, like 3 o'clock in the morning, I just wake up, and I can't go to sleep. And I'm like, all right, what is it, God, right? <laughs> because that's like the quietest time of the entire day is at night. It should be anyways, right? Depends on where you live. And this has happened to me many, many of times. And the first thing he tells me to do is go into my office, right? And get into his word. And I do. When God does this, it means it's very important. Right? Because the Bible says he gives us sleep. He gives us sleep. It's a gift. Sleep is a gift. Right? And he could retract it too. He would be like, boom. And then literally I wake up. And I'm like, I don't want to be up. I'm going to go to sleep. And I sit there and lay there with my eyes open. I can't sleep. I'm like, all right, what are you trying to tell me? <sighs> right? He really wants to convey this message to you if he does this. God chooses people of great faith to lead his people into the unknown. There's a saying that goes along in the church. It says, God does not call the qualified he qualifies the call. So let me break that down. So God does not go, I'm waiting for you to be strong enough, wise enough, have enough schooling, have this, that, and the other, and then I'm going to put you to work, right, to do my work, to do my will. No, what he does is he he looks for, actually the scripture says, he looks for the foolish things of the world. He's like, okay, give me the most foolish person that you could ever find. Like, and he doesn't have to ask, right? That's rhetorical. So uh, this one right here, right? It's like when you're a kid and you're playing like basketball and you're choosing teams, right? And everyone waits to choose that, the least unathletic person ever (laughs) as the last person. (laughs) They're like, okay, (laughs) that's us, right? That's how God builds his team. Think about that for a second. The world is like, if it's like basketball, it's funny, it's in Space Jam, right? They were challenging the aliens, the first Space Jam movie, and they're like, we're going to take over your planet. And they're like, you can't do that. You have to challenge us to some competition. And the Looney Tunes were like, what kind of a competition should we challenge them to? And they're like, okay, let's look at their attributes. He pulls down this thing. He's like, okay, they're short, they're unathletic, they're this, that, and the other. And then one of them is like, basketball, right? They're short, they're unathletic, and so on and so forth. <laughs> yeah, they can't beat us in a game of basketball, but the Looney Tunes didn't even know how to play basketball themselves. And then these little shrimp creatures decided to take some super, actually steal these NBA players' abilities. <laughs> and then the rest is history, right? But like I said, when we're, like kids, we're like, we're choosing – the tall, the dark, the handsome, we're choosing the most athletic, we're choosing the most amazing, we're choosing, okay, this this person, that person, this, right? They're strong, they're uh, uh, athletic, right? They're smart, they're this, that, and the other. God's like, no, 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 I, I'm the opposite of you guys, literally. Right? We're all evil, he's the opposite. <laughs> we're all bad, he's the opposite. We're all selfish. He's the opposite. We're all prideful. He's the opposite. Okay. So God's like in this situation, he's like, okay, I want the losers. That's what he's building his kingdom on, on losers. And the greater your call on God's kingdom is the greater the loser you are to this world. (laughs) I'm sorry, right here. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm accusing myself, right? I want to be a pastor. What I'm really saying in the eyes of the world is I'm a really loser, right? <laughs> and that's who he's building his kingdom on. Losers. <laughs> Nerds, right? The lowest of the lowest. The, the unathletic. The um, not so smart of the... So why? Because he can get glory from that. Because if we do something amazing... The world or the people that know us or knew us will be like that. I knew Jeremy and he's not capable of that. That can't be Jeremy doing that. That's got to be God doing that through him. So look at the Bible again and read it again and again and again and look at the, who God chose. The bigger the calling, the bigger the loser they were to society, right? So like I said, we're, we're, we're on this selection team and God's like, okay, you, and then you, I'm going to choose you, right? And that's what he did with us. He chooses us. We don't choose him. And he gives us faith. And he gives us the measure of faith that we will have, right? Some people God has given greater faith than others. Some people God has given greater wisdom than others. Some pe God has given, according to his spirit and his will, different things for different times and seasons. But God has also gifted people with different kinds of abilities, not just human abilities, but spiritual abilities. One of those is having greater faith. Moses had to have greater faith than most of the Israelites or the elders that followed him out of Egypt through the wilderness. He had to. He was leading an entire nation. He was hearing all these complaints about him, about God, about all these problems every day. Right? So the scriptures say that God gives each of, the, each of us faith. Faith is a gift, my friends. God gives us, uh, each of us, different kinds of wisdom, some greater wisdom than others. God gives healers and pastors and teachers and prophets. Some people have a prophetic ministry. I go, I don't, I, I know about it. And I, I, the Lord has prophesied through me a few times, but not like that. And sometimes I get a little envious. It says, don't be envious because it's the spirit that gives these things. And in like an NBA or a basketball team, there are different players, right? Just like in football, you need the quarterback, but you need the wide receivers. You need the running back, but you need the guards, right? You need all these different players. The same thing in a church. So look at your church. If God has drawn you to that church, there's something that you have that can encourage your brothers and sisters in Christ. You are meant for a purpose and a reason. So am I, right? All of us. Not all of us are called to be pastors. Not all of us are called to be prophets. Not all of us are called to evangelize. Not all of us are called, right? Well, a little bit of sort of evangelism to everyone, but, but some are great evangelists. I met people who are like, wow, you just talk to anybody. <laughs> it's kind of creepy, but they love it. Some people are like, man, you're just preaching is on point. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm just saying whatever is coming to my mind. <laughs> Hopefully it makes sense. <laughs> right? So can you imagine just like just just like on Space Jam, right? The Looney Tunes versus these alien Mars figures that stole these basketball NBA players' talents. <laughs> this is not a perfect analogy. Let's say they were the good guys and the Looney Tunes were the bad guys. And then they turn into these little they're, they're these little shrimp creature aliens from like Mars to take over the Looney Tune lands, and they got their powers, their basketball abilities by this ray gun or something, <laughs> or no, like turning into this like gas and going into their basketball players' nostrils and then taking their talents, right? Which is kind of demonic. But <laughs> let's say they were the good guys, right? Never thought I'd preach about Space Jam in a sermon. <laughs> it's the first one, right? And so check this out. If they were the good guys, that's like the Holy Spirit entering into us. 
and giving us these supernatural abilities, supernatural strength like Samson, supernatural wisdom, right? Like the Apostle Paul, supernatural abilities to fight like David or faith like Abraham, right? It's God who works through us to do these supernatural things that the world goes, you're like the shrit to me. You're like those Space Jam aliens that are shrimpy and small, and you're doing these amazing like basketball techniques or this spiritual stuff. You're like, what is this, right? That's how the world is supposed to look at us because they know, right? On the outside, it's funny because <laughs> I have a baby face. <laughs> <laughs> and when I'm just talking to people, like different kinds of people, I'm very meek. I'm very quiet. I'm very silent. I'm very observant, not just with my eyes, with my ears, right? God has made me into that. And I remember this guy, this pastor comes up to me. I haven't talked to him for a while. And he finally, we meet up again. And he says to me, he was like, oh yeah, Jeremy's back. Some guy says, and then he's like, yeah, the, the, the meek, quiet one. And I kind of chuckled at that because they've seen my sermons, I'm sure. When I get behind the pulpit, I'm like a lion. When I'm living my life, I'm like a lamb, right? I'm not the lamb of God or the lion of Judah, but I'm a very small version of that, right? <laughs> and, uh, and I just live my life meek and, and just chill and whatever, right? When I get behind the pulpit, I turn, it's like I turn into a super saiyan. Like I turn into, I transform. It's just the spirit of God just drops into me. And it's just like, boom, all the fear is away. This is like the most comfortable. I would say the most consistent and comfortable thing for me to do is preach. By the way, when I was a kid, I didn't say anything. Actually, I got made fun of because I couldn't spell words correctly. My grammar was horrible, right? Everything was bad. So when I speak, this isn't me speaking. This is God speaking through me. This is how amazing our God is. He takes the foolish things in the world and he makes us so amazing to show not our power because we know we're just those little aliens on Space Jam that can't jump worth crap, are not athletic, are not smart, not whatever. These aliens are actually stupid, by the way, in the movie. <laughs> But they knew one thing, that they had this ray gun. But our ray gun is God. And that they could empower themselves in the movie, but we can be empowered by God to do amazing, extraordinary things. Things that actually the Bible says or that defy reason, that defy the strength of this world. Isn't that amazing? I think in a lot of movies, we think Samson's like the super strong guy. He is super strong, but we think his appearance is super strong. Heck, he could have been a really small midget person. And people are like, how does this guy have super strong strength? How did he kill 5,000 Philistines? That doesn't make any sense. He's like the smallest guy in our tribe. They say the apostle Paul was actually small and short. And they say Jesus didn't actually look how we see him looking in these movies or TV shows, right? Tall, dark, and handsome or whatever, right? Nice tan, perfect face, right? He actually looked like someone that you wouldn't hang out with. See, the scripture says, I love how God does this because the scripture says he takes the foolish things of the world and he exalts it to heaven. He takes the things that the people say, oh, he or she is so beautiful or so handsome or, or he or she are so smart. Oh, oh, man, they have so many of this and so many of that. He takes those things and he brings them all the way down into Hades. So don't tell me or tell yourself or tell anyone or let anyone tell you that our God cannot use you, cannot use me. Matter of fact, he says, come to me with your brokenness. Come to me with your flaws. There's a song uh, by Brandon Lake. It says he takes our ashes and turns them into beauty. He loves doing it. He takes our weaknesses and turns them into strength. 
He takes our foolishness and turns them into wisdom, like, be, like divine wisdom. That's the greatest wisdom ever. If you've noticed Moses, you ever notice the, the oxymoron in the scriptures? Is if somebody was had astounding faith, they had astounding doubt. Peter, right? Peter had phenomenal faith that I believe was empowered by the Holy Spirit because that was God's faith working through him. And then it was like, wow, Peter's is so, so wise, so amazing. But if you look at the other aspects of Peter, the human flesh version of Peter, Peter was the one that doubted a lot. Your greatest strength in the Lord is all is also your greatest weakness in your flesh. Moses was a was a most humble man ever. I prayed this. I said, God, make me the most humble man you can make me. You know what God started showing me? How prideful I really was. I'm like, that's the very opposite. I said, Lord, every time I pray, <laughs> whether it's this, that, the other, or myself, or whoever, <laughs> it's like the very opposite of what I prayed for. I'm like, why? And he's like, I'm going to show you your weakness first. I'm going to show you your foolishness first. I'm going to show you how prideful you really are so I can drop you. But I'm still holding on to you so I can show my power when I lift you up, so I can show my wisdom when I speak through you. Be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you pray for. <laughs> Because God will take your greatest failures to be, to be your greatest strengths, to be your wisest wisdom, to be your, like literally, he does that. He takes your greatest weaknesses and makes them your greatest strengths. Isn't that amazing? He takes your most stupidest things that you've done and makes it wiser than all the wisdom of this world. But remember, that has nothing to do with you. Apostle Paul says, does that mean I go and sin now because God is restoring everything? Absolutely not. I still try not to. But even if I do, he will restore me and he will redeem me and he will bring glory to all my failures. Amen. The world is an unpredictable place. You know what unpredictable means? Not predictable. Not knowable. <laughs> it's kind of hilarious. The scripture says we don't walk by sight. You know what part of seeing is? Reason. Think about it. Something happens, you take the knowledge of good and evil, and you try to categorize it, reason it, paint it. This is this, that is that. Did you know that was, that's what reason is? This is this, that is that, which is a box. <laughs> Whatever it is, whether it's good or bad, we always like to paint what's right and wrong, which is to try to redefine right and wrong for ourselves, rather than looking through the eyes of faith, I don't know why that happened, whether it was good or whether it was bad, but I know that it happened and whatever reason, God is allowing it to happen, specifically with bad things, right? To ultimately play out for good. <laughs> I don't understand, <laughs> but God's will be done, amen? The world is a very unpredictable place. And there's all these gurus and teachers. And don't get me wrong. We need teachers. We need pastors. We need preachers. We need people to just teach knowledge to our kids and stuff like that. But there are so many aspects of life that just cannot be understood. Right? There are so many aspects of life that we just cannot put into a black and white system. 
and say, this is this and that is that. We can look at our own lives and see, I don't even understand why this happened to me. I don't even understand why I did that. But how am I to judge another person's life? But I don't understand why I do what I do, as the Apostle Paul says. But we're so certain about judging everybody else's life. And there are some absolute truths that we can't have and know here on this earth, specifically from the Word of God, right? But there is just so much wisdom and so much things that we just cannot understand. And what we like to do is reason, or may I say assume, why this happened to us, or why this is happening to them, or why this is going on, right? But the truth is, we live in an unpredictable world. And what shines the most in this world is not all these self-help things that we go through. It's not all this stuff that we could know, considering we have the internet, and it has boosted up a lot of our pride because we have more access to knowledge (laughs) or science or whatever. You know what true faith means? Trusting even though it doesn't make sense. The first words that Jesus said to me when I met him, can't you just believe? Does everything have to make sense? Actually, it was the opposite. Does everything have to make sense? Can't you just believe? And I'll end here on that with, for you. Does everything have to make sense? Why this happened to you? Why this is happening to them? Or why this is going on in the world? Can't you just believe God is saying that I am in control? 100%. I knew this was going to happen to you. I knew you would choose that. I knew they would do this to you. I know how you see them. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're assuming. I know what they're assuming about you. But in spite of all that, can't you just believe that I am allowing these things to happen for your good? The world is an unpredictable world. Like Alice in the Wonderland, everything in the world keeps changing. So don't cling to the things that keep changing. Cling to the one and his word that never changes. And you will find yourself on solid ground. Amen. (laughs) Because his world is so unsolid. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this word. (sighs) Teach us, guide us who you really are. In your sovereign name I pray. Amen. And God bless.